Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank. Sports, one of the purest forms of human interaction, remains a universal language. And in Nigeria, the dedication and determination of athletes engaged in head-to-head -head and hand-to-hand -hand competition speak volumes. Traditional forms of wrestling and boxing, these combat sports are making their way from the villages to big city venues. These are Africa's modern-day warriors. This is Inside Africa. Maxwell Kalu is a man committed to combat sports. An amateur kickboxer. He's lived in London all his life. But his parents made sure he always kept a connection with their homeland, Nigeria. My earliest memory of Nigerian fighting sports was when I was about eight. I went back to um, the village which I'm from in southeast Nigeria called Ahafia. And it was there that I first experienced traditional wrestling. Today, Maxwell is on a mission to showcase Nigeria's rich tradition of wrestling, boxing, and his heritage. The village where my dad's from, they're sort of famous in olden times for being warriors. So I always carried that. I always um, sort of took a sense of pride in that. So um, very naturally, when I was younger, I started um, competing and sort of training in um, combat sports and martial arts. So I started with karate, I love that. And then I went into kickboxing, which I've done for the longest since. Maxwell now sees an opportunity to capitalize on Nigeria's strong tradition of combat sports. He wants to introduce the world to what he felt he missed out on during his days as a kickboxer. I would have loved to partake in my indigenous combat sports, but there was no opportunity for anyone to ever do that in the UK. And that's a big part of what we're doing with African Warriors. Leaving behind his corporate nine-to-five job, Maxwell decided to pursue his dream of building an entirely new sports organization full-time. He calls it the African Warriors Fighting Championship. I got the vision just by looking at this exciting time for combat sports. And I always had this, I guess, this pull towards home. So I was working in, in London, I was working in the city, um, and I enjoyed that, but it didn't really fulfill me in the way African Warriors does. So for me, um, what really just made it happen is I spoke to my cousins who make up the leadership team of African Warriors today, and I just said, I want to do something which is really showcasing our traditional cultures. And we decided on um, combat sports. Maxwell travels to Nigeria regularly to help get his venture off the ground. He works closely with the village of Ehamufu, located in his mother's homestead in Nubu. The village is known for its traditional wrestling, one of the oldest forms of combat. And here in Ehamufu, it still remains a significant part of daily life. An outlet for many is also a symbol of unity. Dambe and wrestling, the sports we feature in the African Warriors Fighting Championship, are just rawer than these other combat sports. They're contested on sand, and the athletes we feature usually come from pretty hard backgrounds. It's a uniting factor. And uh, like in the village set up here, you see the little ones wrestling. It's not a, a type of fighting like you see the English wrestling. Ours is just for playing. And we grow these children grade by grade onto maturity. And that brings us together as one. Extremely proud of their tradition of wrestling and boxing, the Kings have become important partners in forming the league. 
They deeply care about their communities and really care about extending opportunities to their young men, to their young people. A powerhouse in local competitions for generations. The wrestlers here were already known for their style of wrestling, known as Umba. Enugu State they are the best of this Igbo land. No other place in Nigeria can be compared with our strength in wrestling. Sometimes we are not educated enough, but you cannot defeat us by power. God gave us power naturally. So it's not man-made, it's God-made. These sports have existed for centuries, way before we had a Nigeria in this form. Wrestling, for example, would be contested um, when a man was looking to prove his manliness, um, and hopefully if he was looking for um, a woman's hand in marriage, for example. Dambe has its roots in warfare, so this is how different groups would settle wide disputes over land and the rest of it. Your relations give you prizes. Even through this wrestling, you'll get married. Our young ladies, they get attached to you because of your prowess. Just like my son, my first wife, because of wrestling, she accepted me. This is the man that will marry me. He's, he's a capable person. While Inuku State remains known for his wrestling, interestingly enough, it is also known for his yams. The two come together once a year in a festival that pits the region's best wrestlers against each other, with the winner taking home yams. Our people have a very big ceremony. We have a feast, and every community have to show whether they have power. This is what we used to remember the time to eat yam, celebration of yam festival in our place. It's the ways of our forefathers before we were born. And it won't be nice for anyone to lose the ways of his forefathers. While the rituals of the Yam Festival are important, many of the wrestlers and boxers here are looking for opportunities beyond Enugu. Uh, these people have been practicing um, uh, these combat sports for centuries. Some of them practice at acts that have been passed down by their fathers and their grandfathers. But they understand that what they do have a very significant value to them and their lives. And uh, they are not ha really happy that up to this moment in this 21st century, that uh, the right audience has not been able to see what they do. So since we launched back in April, we've had people around the world get in touch. I've had people from Saudi Arabia, Brazil, the United States, just message us on Facebook and say they love what we're doing. Um, we've had a few people ask, when are we going to be doing events internationally? And that's definitely part of the plan. But the first point is starting with Africa, starting with Nigeria. We want to project it to the external world. Even the state government is now awarding prizes. So we are not taking it very lightly. With the sport becoming more nationalized, the men here have begun training intensely. They are preparing for an opportunity they hope will get them well-needed exposure and experience. We're actually coming up to our first event in Lagos, that's called the Battle for Lagos. And what we're doing there, we're doing that in collaboration with the Nigerian government. And we're taking these combat sports and showcasing them to the local communities in Lagos. I also am ready to go to that Lagos and make sure that I win the way that I, the way that I used to win our peoples in that uh, community. The Battle for Lagos will showcase both traditional wrestling and a style of boxing known as Dambe. Practiced widely in northern Nigeria, it's a true pugilist's performance, where a fighter's hand is wrapped in cloth while the other remains behind his back. We feature two indigenous Nigerian combat sports. So Dambe is a form of boxing practiced mainly in northern Nigeria and wrestling, which goes by various names, Mba to the Igbo people, Kokoa to the Yorubas. And ultimately, the, the goal of both of them is to knock your opponent to the ground. Many here are confident the upcoming battle will also be the perfect place to display Enugu's dominance in both sports. Those four boys, <laughs> 
I want that people who will go, go and meet them, they will disgrace them. Automatically, they are going to disgrace them. Ahead, making music inside and outside the ring. People of uh, Hamufu is the best, best people in this uh, Enugu. Nobody will challenge us. Thinking of banking in Africa, think Zenith. In today's fast-moving, fast-changing world, you need a financial partner that understands your unique expectations. A bank with presence in major financial centers across the world, with the enabling platform to facilitate seamlessly, whenever, wherever, however. A bank with best-in-class financial solutions from a superb combination of technology and human touch for easy, fast and secure banking that creates real value. Turning dreams into reality is now in your hands. People. Technology. Service. Zenith Bank. In your best interest. We all want to lead fulfilled lives. Living with a disability is often an obstacle for so many people. Thanks to the rehabilitation process I went through, I was able to learn how to adapt to my disabilities and to dream of building a successful future. The support given by the Kuwait Fund empowers people to change their world. Rehabilitation is definitely life-changing. It's a journey towards a brighter tomorrow. Sunday, Vans got actress and activist Jane Fonda on her climate fight. We have to be out there. We have to be risking arrest. And former Governor Deval Patrick on the next steps of his long shot presidential run. The Van Jones Show, Sunday on CNN. I'm Julia Chastity. I'll speak to newsmakers, risk takers, and the ultimate game changers. First move with Julia Chastity, weekdays on CNN. Ehamufu is a village located in Enugu State in southeastern Nigeria. And it is home to a form of traditional wrestling known locally as Umba. As wrestlers here prepare for the upcoming battle for Lagos, emotions are high at the chance to finally compete on a national stage. For many of the men, it will be their first time leaving the state. I I am really happy that I'm going because I haven't been to a place like that before. And I'm really happy that it is because of this wrestling that is taking me there. And my belief is that when I get there, I will do more than I do here. They said that we are going to take us to Lagos, so I'm happy for that. Right now, wrestling does not provide any income. When Felix and Obina are training, they have day jobs to help support their families. I have other things I do like barbing and I play football. Felix spends his off days cultivating rice, yams, cassava and plantain. During uh, December time, we are going to cut the rice and get the rice, the seed of the rice. When it is time to sell the rice, it is sold at AK Market. Obina spends his days in a local barber shop. I don't only barb there. I also render other services there, like selling of CD plates and charging of batteries. Outside the barbershop, he remains close to his Enugu traditions. I have a music group I dance for. I am also a dancer. I dance for the gong musicians here in my village. That type of song, Igedvu, the people who play that type of song started playing it when they still in primary school. Those were the songs they danced in school and as they grow older, they teach the next generation. While music and dancing remain a significant tradition of the Igbo culture, it is also infused in Enugu's rich reverence for wrestling. We call the music Mbereke. You have the Iba, the one they beat the drum. You have the xylophone type of instrument. This is they have their tunes, and every good listener listens to it and understands the music, the language of the music. He plays him up, and he's ready to move mountains. The Mbereke music also serves as a greeting between the wrestlers and the musicians. It's a form of both acknowledgement and encouragement. That Mbereke gives us more power. Even if you, are not, you have no power, 
when the Mbeleke is calling your name, you will start having much power. Power is key to a restless persona. Regardless of their daily routines, Ehamufu's wrestlers are admired and respected. They are seen as champions. It gives the person popularity within the community and outside. For Obina, the upcoming battle for Lagos is a chance to take his warrior status to the next level. My joy knows no bound because this is what we've expecting for a long time. It has been our prayer that God should send someone. So our culture of wrestling does not end in our village, just like it was in the past. The internet in Hamufu are happy. Because our hope that these are our four people, four men, are going to come with excellent name. Not second, all of them I will get first, first. As they prepare for the big match, Coach Davidson makes sure his fighters are active and in the best shape possible. He strongly advises them to avoid alcohol and women during training. We cannot stay idle. We cannot stay idle. So we are, I do. I'm, I make sure that I put all of them busy all the time. Up next, the match these men have been fighting for their whole lives. The battle for Lagos gets real. Thinking of banking in Africa? Think Zenith. In today's fast-moving, fast-changing world, you need a financial partner that understands your unique expectations. A bank with presence in major financial centers across the world, with the enabling platform to facilitate seamlessly, whenever, wherever, however. A bank with best-in-class financial solutions from a superb combination of technology and human touch for easy, fast, and secure banking that creates real value. Turning dreams into reality is now in your hands. People, technology, service. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Grow your media business at 2454 Abu Dhabi, your gateway to the Middle East and North Africa. Enjoy 0% corporate tax, 30% cashback rebate on productions, a full suite of media services, and state-of-the-art facilities. With zero license and registration fees for your first two years, our business development team will guide you through our simple setup process to get your business up and running. So get in on the action. Join us today. He's interviewed five U.S. presidents, authored seven books, and has an independent voice that resonates. What happened to when we were united against a common enemy? He's raw, unique, and one of America's most important talk show hosts. Watch Smirconish, Saturday on CNN. On the eve of the Battle for Lagos, Jalisco Stadium sits empty, awaiting the arrival of traditional wrestlers and boxers from across Nigeria. An outdoor stadium open to the elements is the perfect playing field for modern day warriors bringing an ancient form of combat to the big city. For these Dambe boxers from the north, the journey here has been tedious. If the road was not that bad and we didn't have challenges on our way, we would have arrived in this town much sooner. It's true. We traveled for long, but God brought us here safe. Lagos is not our land. We came to look for food. There is nothing I am wishing other than wish for victory. For the wrestlers hailing from the southern state of Enugu, their first view of Lagos is an eye-opener. How I see Lagos, Lagos is a very comfortable place to stay. And I like the environment of the Lagos. I like it here so much. Nobody will visit such a place and will prefer to stay behind in the village. In awe and slightly overwhelmed by the sprawling city, these fighters are still firmly focused on the reason they came, to make their village proud. The tournament's going to be great. We have 20 fighters coming from around Nigeria, villages, towns from the north, south, east, everywhere. So what we're doing with that is showcasing dambe, traditional boxing, and wrestling. 
the athletes we feature who we're really excited about giving opportunities to usually come from pretty hard backgrounds. You know, these are guys who are working as mechanics, working as farmers, some of the times coming from Nigeria's most poorest communities. So ultimately, they bring that same energy and rawness when they compete. Ahead of tomorrow's battle, Enugu's coach Davidson prepares his men. Not far from the Enugu wrestlers, Team Lagos goes through their warm-up routines. Though they may have home field advantage, Team Enugu remains confident. No, no, nobody can defeat them. Whether you are old or you are anything, you, you know that you get power, you can go there. Match day finally arrives. A steady beat and a persistent rainfall sets the stage for a soggy competition. But even the rainy season cannot dampen these fighters' spirits. As they prepare the ground for battle, the wrestlers and dumbbe boxers gear up. They know this is their chance to prove themselves. My finisher is when I hit someone. If I can punch him one, two or three times, I will knock him down. I will blow you on the stomach once or twice. If you escape the first, you won't escape the second. You won't escape the third. While some assure themselves of their skill, others pray for guidance. And they pray God may help me to win this competition. It's finally time to enter the ring. As the rain pesters on, it does little to diminish these warriors' will to fight for the win. The familiar music helps motivate. Regardless of the weather, today is all about mindset. These people, they practice this act in their local uh, environment. And uh, during rain, sometimes it adds to the excitement. Between the downpours and grey skies, the determination of the wrestlers from Enugu is tested. The fighters came to fight, the coaches, everyone's really rallied around. These Lagos guys didn't come to play, um, and sadly, you know, our Eastern friends lost. The event was an eye-opener to them, so they have uh, assured us that they are going to go back and keep working hard. For many, the outcome of their match is just the beginning, a stepping stone. My boys are strong, but the problem is lack of energy. So I will put more training on them. So when I will come back again, there's no problem again. There is nothing I can say than I thank God. God gave me luck to win this competition. Although all of the Inugu fighters lost their matches, they remain hopeful for upcoming events and grateful for the opportunity. I did not win the match, but the guy that win me, let him be ready for me next time. They trained very well before coming here. I will still put more effort. So next time we meet, what happened here doesn't happen again. As for the Dumbe boxes, they are happy at least one of them won, showing true sportsmanship. If he wins, I win. If I win, he wins. We are not supposed to torture ourselves because we came from the same place. Even as it stands, I am victorious because the one I am with won. I rejoice. I am happy. It's championship. That's how it is inherited. Today is yours. Tomorrow is with your brother. These amateur fighters are hopeful that a renewed recognition in traditional wrestling and boxing can lead to bigger things. Honestly, I want the people of Kano, not only Kano, Everywhere, I want them to be proud of me because of this game. For many of these wrestlers and boxers, it is more than a sport to them. It is their livelihood, and the exposure has proven invaluable. I want our youth to be strong every time, every year. And I don't want them to be stealing. That is why I used to train them all the time. Anybody, any one of them I see staying idle, I will push, I will push the person into the wrestling. 
Everything is done for reward. I fight Dambe to get money and to take care of my needs and to make a name for myself, for the world to know me. For something I have been doing for 18 to 19 years now, I'm no longer a child in it. As for now, the goal of the event organizers is to capture the passion of these men and help foster the growth of their sport, not only in Nigeria, but throughout Africa and beyond. For those athletes, those uh, combat sport athletes that has the talent, that has what it takes to make the world stage, is a, a very big opportunity for them to make a living. It's a very, very big opportunity for them to become superstars in their land and in the world. I think we can take these sports worldwide and build an African sporting giant. Um, ultimately, MMA now, which is the closest comparison, mixed martial arts, is the fastest growing sport in the world and has hundreds of millions of fans around the world. And that's the market we're tapping into. We're showcasing indigenous African sports, which have been contested way before MMA or anything else existed, and we're taking it to audiences wherever they are. Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank.